Welcome back to another edition. Eat my shorts right here at the rant and share. Smoking a poor excuse for a lucky strike. It's the best I got. Sorting out the world's problems. One slow inhale to a time. Well, I finally got my shower and my shave and my teeth brushed. And I didn't fall down and the shower mat didn't try and murder me. Well, it probably tried and I just won this time. But I got to thinking, you know, with all these fun dad healthcare stories that Pete wanted to hear... Well, I got another doozy of one for you about why I hate in home health care and I think they're the fucking devil. And to be clear, I'm not talking about all of them. I'm just talking about the one at St. Luke's, otherwise known as St. Pukes. And I'm going to tell you why. Their service fucking sucks, yo. And they absolutely just do not care about fucking patient rights and human rights in general. And they will do everything in their power they can to get on your nerves and to fuck with you and overcharge you, okay? And this was just right after my dad got out of the, you know, the hospital on his feeding tube. This like six years ago, okay? So the old man was sick, right? And they kept telling us, oh, you're going to take him to a nursing home. Well, we most certainly are not. And well, they got the social worker involved, and we all know how I feel about those people. They all need stabbed fucking cigarette standby <sighs> all right back so they got a social worker involved and they finally got me and my mom who were our, the medical power of attorney mom but she left me in charge of it so it was me because at that time i was taking full term care of dad anyway so i did it all by myself and him and i had a routine but they said, well, it's just, don't you want bath aids and help? I'm like, no, fuck off, go away, piss off, you cocksuckers. Fucking get out of here, leave us alone. And finally, I just signed the damn paper for in-home health care to come out one time just so they could put their little empty heads at peace. All right, so you fast forward, they sent Dad home from the hospital with instructions on how to use a feeding tube pump, right? Well, they didn't have a feeding tube pump delivered to the house. So his blood sugar was crashing. He was on oxygen and a piss bag with a walker and on strong IV medication and antibiotics and every other goddamn thing. Sicker than a dog. Hadn't had his dentures in two weeks. And he's sitting on the couch and it's time to feed him. Now you can't feed dad because dad can't eat anything by mouth, right? Uh, he spent like six years of his life this way. And he's got this feeding tube coming out of his chest. Okay, so how do you feed somebody without the kangaroo pump? Well, it's very simple. Uh, they deliver the stuff. They deliver you the wrong stuff. You get on the phone with Luann, have her explain to you how to do a bolus feeding, and then put her on the phone with your mother because she's terrified you're going to do it wrong while you're taking care of Dad. And Dad was a good sport about this most of the time, although he did love with those old slip tip syringes until they switched to the infant ones to every once in a while just cough while I was feeding him, and he'd do it on purpose so we'd all get covered in this sticky stuff, because he thought that shit was funny. Because then he'd get another shower, and then maybe a fentanyl patch change, okay? So we're, we're catching on to how difficult this was. This is the first day of him being home from the hospital. So, next day comes around. Fucking social worker comes in. Blah, 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 blah. They intake this and take that. We have to look through all the meds. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, just fucking, it was a day of it. Well, if you know anything about feeding tube, then you know once you feed somebody and the, the evil devil jevity stuff goes through their guts, guess what happens? He got to go poo-poo now. Now, she was in the middle of interviewing my dad, who, by the way, had dementia and couldn't basically answer questions on his own anyway. And their sole purpose in life was to annoy me that fucking day. Just like horse flies or my goddamn sister. Okay, but this is worse. So I explained, look, he's making poo-poo face. And she's like, what's poo-poo face mean? I said, poo-poo face means get him to the toilet or you're doing laundry. And if I have to do laundry, I'm going to rub your fucking nose in this. And I don't mean metaphorically, I'm going to say, look what you did. I mean, I'm going to hit you with a rolled up newspaper and shove your face in the runny shit and make you clean it up. So she's following me, not helping, 
me carry my father to the bathroom to get his pants down to get him sat down on the big boy potty so he could make a stinky doom. But she kept looking behind him to see what was going on, if he had a sore on his butt or something. And I grabbed her by the hair and pulled her out of the way. And no sooner had I did that, he let out this fucking horrendous cloud of shit that come out of him. And she almost got some honor. And she was mad at me because I grabbed her until then she realized why I grabbed her. Right. So this is the first day of this. OK, and so we're going through all these buttholes coming over and inspecting things and looking things over and every other goddamn thing. Then comes the bath aids, which actually was kind of fun for him. He really enjoyed that. Now, I was the only person in the world that could get my dad to do anything because I knew how to talk to him and he trusted me because he had Louis body dementia, which is the mean one. That's where you swear and hit things and use racial words and don't remember anything, and you scream and yell for no fucking reason. It was the mean kind of dementia, okay? Anyway, so this beautiful bath aid comes in. I said, Mr. Joe, it's time for your bath. And of course, old man was like, ooh, girls, I'll get in the bathtub. And so they're in there for an hour, hour and a half, and they used every fucking towel we had. I mean, bathing the old man was a fucking shit show. Like, he did not want to get in the fucking bathtub. The only way I could ever get him to do it was on the fentanyl. I say, okay, time to get in the tub, Stinky. He's like, I'm not going. You can't make me. I said, fine, no dope today. You wouldn't. Well, I wasn't going to hold out on him, but he believed me, right? This is part of being convincing. So, Stinky Boy gets in the bathtub. And uh, he was just delighted. I mean, he was having a great old fucking time, running water and everything else. And he gets out, shake off like a dog, and we have to chase him around to get him to put his fucking underwear back on and everything else. You know, because he didn't want to be dressed. He wanted to go right outside naked and smoke, which I'm fine with, but uh, I don't think the whole neighborhood would have been, you know, it would have been disturbing. So you get a naked, wet old person that's just had the time of his life. And I asked him, so what the fuck took so long? He's like, y you know my winky? I'm like, yeah, I know what your danky is. Uh, I got her to scrub it real good. Now, I swear, that dirty old man, he could talk women into doing any fucking thing in the world. He got away with shit that I never would. Until I'm a salty old man like him. And even then, I'd probably still get slapped for it. But I remember this pregnant lady come over and did his wound care one time when he was still in in-home health care, and she was about nine months pregnant, and he just looked right at her and looked her right in the eyes. And said, are, are, are you just a little bit pregnant, honey? You, you seem to be putting on the pounds there. And I'm just in the Burgess Meredith kind of old man voice. And, uh, yeah, he got away with it. And, of course, we all laughed because it was inappropriate, and that's why it was funny. But, man, I tell you one thing. I don't know how the fuck we did what we did with him for so many years, but he died a free man, and that's what's fucking important. So, as always, uh, i got to go figure out what the hell the Snoopy Senior's up to. She's on the telephone wondering why she can't buy mashed potatoes with the insurance card. So I can tell it's already going to be a fucking day of it. And, as always, Thursdays can eat my shorts. And uh, stay tuned. <laughs>